Come to recording. Okay. Now we're recording. And now, thank you. Okay. okay. All right, just a statement that we abide by the W3C IPR policy and only people and companies listed are allowed to make substantive contributions. Uh, welcome, I think as everyone knows, we're gonna focus on uh, deciding on proposals for substantive changes to W uh, WebRTCPC today. And uh, as usual, we have information on the meeting in the wiki, uh, including links to the slides. Do we have a scribe? Is anybody volunteering to scribe? Uh, Dom, can you do it? I will. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah, please, please do it in the IRC channel. Okay, here's what we're uh, trying to get through today. It's a lot of stuff. Uh, and let's get started. Yanni Bar. All right, thank you. So um, we have, there's like four or five issues here that all have a bit of a common uh, story behind them. So I, I felt it was uh, uh, a common problem statement, if you will. So I'm gonna take a couple of slides just to get people um, I'll probably save this time to go through this uh, once. So the um, introduction here is to describe what I call perfect negotiation. And I'd like you to imagine, what if you could add remove media to and from a live RTC peer connection without worrying about state, glare, role, meaning what side you're on and what condition the connection is in? We'd simply call, for instance, uh, you know, PC add track, track stream, and that's it. The track appears uh, remotely. And behind the scenes, negotiation is written once, and it's isolated from the rest of your application logic using on ice candidate, on negotiation needed, and your signaling on message. And these are written perfectly, uh, where on message is written to handle glare, <clears throat> meaning uh, two seats comp uh, competing about sending an offer, uh, handle, handling glare using rollback. And is this nuts? Um, no, I think uh, Chrome Final 75 uh, now supports fix, uh, negotiation needed. There were some bugs in it. But right now, uh, Firefox is the only one browser to implement rollback. So um, you can see uh, more on this in uh, my blog post, A Perfect Negotiation in WebRTC, where I did all this and how to write it perfectly, so to speak. And uh, the short of it, TLDR, is that this works in Firefox, yay but uh, reveals our uh, spec APIs to be racy and glare prone. So that's what a lot of these issues are about to fix our APIs. Uh, so, but I want to, so next slide. Uh, <clears throat> so the, here's some uh, illustrations basically. So the high level application methods will be the ones on top, add track, create data channel, that, that kind of stuff, and including uh, transceiver methods like direction or attributes like direction and set streams and stop. And uh, those are separate in my mind from the lower level, uh, the lower level signaling methods that can be all abstracted away using uh, events like negotiation needed and nice candidate. Uh, next slide. So perfect negotiation really means to have those negotiation methods written once and then the application log uh, doesn't have to deal with it anymore. Next slide. And can now even manage a peer connection on either end using only these methods and glare is solved in negotiation needed using rollback. So that's the, that's the holy grail. And that sort of works in Firefox now. We fixed some bugs, and but it, it didn't cover a lot of uh, ugliness in our API. So next slide. So the problem, if we don't fix these races and stop, then it doesn't work. And it's a house of cards that falls down because once in a while, like 95% of the time it'll work, but that other time, you have an API problem that there's an inherent race that you can't really fix. And my original title for this slide was, if it's not perfect, it's crap. So um, I'm hoping that we can fix these issues. Next slide. Uh, and, and that would mean having to go back to manual negotiation where every time you touch the API, you have to then deal with negotiating as part of the change that you're making. Uh, so here's, um, so we're, 
diving right into the hardest one. I, I might have resorted to some of these slides. Uh, I wanted to tackle the what I thought were the most pressing ones first. So the stop uh, situation is a longstanding one. Um, so I'm going to try to explain it with some slides and the problem and um, show a PR that I hope is uh, that I've discussed some with Henrik as well that we think is the best solution to this. So here's the um, chart again uh, using. Uh, I'm going to use this slide a lot, so let me set it up. It's like on, on the far left and the far right side, you have the application logic on either side. And in the middle, you have the negotiation logic. And so whenever you call, like create data channel or add track. In this case, the offer is on the, yeah. And the offer is always on the left and the answer is on the right. So uh, a change happens on the application logic on the left. Uh, negotiation needed is fired. You get set local description offer, goes to the other side. Uh, which receives it and uh, does a applies a set remote description offer and then generates an offer like the create offer answer is sort of implicit assume that they're called as well and then you get set local description answer it goes back to the offerer and on the remote end you also have created a channel ad track and all these things but those are not really picked up on in the as as the answer is that's part of the answer stage except for stop uh, all those methods if you call ad track there that fires negotiation needed but that's but the, the answer basically says oh hold on uh, we're going to wait with negotiation needed until we're back to stable state because that's much simpler and in that case the roles end up being reversed and an offer will come out from the answer side and the arrows will go the other way and you can basically or you can reverse the diagram and switch which one is the offer and the answer so next slide. <clears throat> so today, this is with stop on the offer side. Everything works great. You call, you have two transceivers, TC1 and TC2. You call TC1 stop. Uh, the uh, the uh, JSEP basically creates a zero port that gets sent over to the other side. The other transceiver gets stopped. Everything's wonderful. And you come back to stable state on both sides. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> So here's the stop bundle problem. Uh, what happens now if the answer calls TC, TC1 stop? And that's a little different because, uh, and technically speaking, this is if you call TC1 stopped right uh, inside uh, have remote offer or right before set remote description offer is called. So you can even call it in stable state and it's still a problem. What happens here is that if you try to stop the first transceiver, TC1, <clears throat> that's also the offer tagged uh, M line, and there's no affordance in JSEP or bundle to uh, that ends up stopping the transport for everyone in the answer. And there's no way in bundle or JSEP to to switch around the trans the transport to one of the others in time. So what happens when you get it in the answer? You end up stopping both transceiver TC1 and TC2, and we're very sad about that. So next slide. <clears throat> So, and this says the same thing, basically, but the bundle spec has painted us in the corner here when calling stop on the first transceiver or before, uh, it's effectively lethal and it stops all transceivers. And this is racy behavior because if you're not worrying about, if you're buying into the abstraction that you have negotiation needed taken care of negotiation for you, this is very surprising because now you have to care about signaling state suddenly again. So it breaks, it breaks the abstraction. And I've been told it's impossible to fix in bundle at this point, these specs are mature, both bundle and JSEP and no one wants to open them again. So, uh, and that's unfortunate since it, you know, makes this abstraction really hard. So um, a quick recap of the two use cases of stop. There's a high level one, which is that you need to relinquish sources after an app is done with transceiver. And it shows some code there. And the problem is that this code will work 95% of the time, but once in a blue moon, it'll stop all transceivers just because we happened to hit the time window where signaling state was have remote offer or was about to be. And that's a foot gun. The other use case is the low-level expert that wants to reject an offered M line in time for the answer. And so next slide. Uh, and it's actually worse than we thought because I, I alluded to already is that the current spec language in stop assumes that this is only a problem in have remote offer when in reality it's a problem even in stable state. If you call stop in stable, the way the model is, there's no way to know what comes next. If what comes next is set local description offer, then you're fine. However, if, if what comes next is set the remote description offer, then you have this problem. And even the language we have in stop today 
which says if we're in have remote offer, then take care of stopping all these other transceiver JavaScript objects does not work. So how do we fix this? Um, and basically, this is an inherent JSET problem. There's JSET only has one idea of stopped, and it's synchronous. And once you're in that state, there's no way out of it. So there's really no way to to uh, split this up. Um, and so one possible solution would be to stop, try to stop them later and set local description answer only in this corner case, but that would only solve this uh, second issue. It won't really solve the overall that stop is racy if you don't care about negotiation. So the second solution then we came up with here is the one we're pushing, which is a safer stop method that only affects create offer, not create answer. Uh, and then a separate reject method which would work like the old stop did, but a little more with a little added safety, which is that it would throw in valid state error, except and have local offer state. And that would solve both issues. Now this defies JSEP a bit, which doesn't anticipate and has no affordance for creating a stopped offer while not also being a stop transceiver. So uh, that, that's, uh, but I think we can solve that because when we look through JSEP, it wasn't that many references to stopped. So uh, uh, we explored a solution that avoids, uh, avoids JSEP, basically. Next slide. So um, at this point, you might wonder, do we really need stop? So I put in the slide to remind people why it's important. Um, in plan B, this was very common. People would just call PC add track uh, when the participant enters, and then PC remove track sender when the participant drops. And they would do this over and over again, and there would be lots of participants joining and leaving. Everything was fine. Um, and I think in plan B, it just cleaned up resources automatically. I don't know exactly the details, but that's how the code is written. Unfortunately, in, uniplan, in a unified plan, this accumulates resources because the transceiver remains, even in the API. Um, when you call remove track, this is just setting the direction of your transceiver to inactive, but it's still there. And we changed the spec where it used to end tracks, it now mutes remote tracks uh, instead of ending them because they can resume because they're still there. <clears throat> so the API now, sadly for many, is complicated because it supports two models, two ways of thinking, the old way and then the transceiver way. So what you have to do in the API to do it, when you call add track and remove, when you call remove track, when a participant drops, you also have to find the transceiver for that uh, sender and you have to stop it. <clears throat> And the browser cannot automatically stop it because this stops both directions. So we have no way of knowing if that's what the user wants. So this is, like it or not, this is the API that we have. Um, and then, in fact, what becomes clear is that the answer rejecting properties, which are the ones we showed with a big explosion in the chart, are undesirable here because the JavaScript has no desire to, to uh, it doesn't even need to reject the answer, so to speak, in most cases. So how do we solve this? Next slide. Uh, one, I also need to mention, there's a seemingly simple workaround that we looked at for a while, which uh, you can just add a dummy transceiver. Yay, just add it before anything else. And this becomes the offerer tagged uh, dummy. Except this unfortunately has another foot gun, which this upsets your app logic. If you later call add track, add track is defined to attach itself to transceivers. So this will <laughs> attach itself to the dummy and uh, you don't have a, uh, and now you're back to square one, is that you wanted to keep a transceiver around that you would never stop, and now you don't have that anymore. Uh, so web developers would then have to either avoid ad, ad track outright or learn to use only ad transceiver, but that has different semantics and it won't pair up with remote transceivers. The API is slightly different than quite ugly. Another it problem has, is- if, uh, It uh, also has backwards compatibility issues. So it's, it's uh, you can't, just add another M section. Right. Another problem is if both ends up do it, both ends end up doing this, you end up with two dummies, which is seems like a waste and also confusion over the order of transceivers and which one is actually used for the transport. But ultimately this workaround does not solve the foot gun because people will still need to actively know about it and to and actively try to avoid it. So uh, I think uh, we think what people uh, want is people need to use stop because of the API, but they want to not have to think about all this. So next slide. So this is the PR that we're proposing and the solution we think is we introduce a new stopping 
state or new stopping attribute, new Boolean attribute. And this stopping, unlike stopped, stopping affects create offer only. And so the stop method will now set stopping instead of stopped, but other works work the same locally, which means you still stop uh, sending, you send RTCB by, and you end all your local receiver tracks. Stopping affects create offer only, not create answer. And we do this by tricking JSEP because JSEP only had like a handful of references to stopped. So we avoid this problem. And there's one place where we have to say when you actually create the SDP, we have to say, uh, create SDP, it says create SDP, create the SDP as, as outlined in JSEP. And we are adding the language with the exception that treated stopping transceiver as stopped only in this case. Uh, yeah, Jan uh, yes. in this model, does stop still stop sending and receiving? <clears throat> yes, stop still stops uh, sending and receiving locally. So think of stopping as your local stop and stopped as a remote and local stop okay. or a negotiated stop. Yes, yeah, so, so so it's it's the same thing as it is today, except that uh, it it won't stop anything in an answer. It will wait, uh, like it won't negotiate that it's stopped until the mm -hmm. next trade offer. Uh, meaning there's there's a window of time where you're locally you're stopped, but you haven't received an acknowledgement uh, that right. the other end knows that you're stopped. But but it's it's achieving the same thing. Yeah, so stop already today has a synchronous part to it and a negotiated part to it. So the synchronous part now is formally called stopping, which is the local stop, and that, that will still uh, send RTCP by um, to the other side, and it will end track uh, transceiver receiver track. So you'll have ended tracks, but it, it's already today a state where you could actually receive uh, events and other things. And so th this is sort of a... Uh, a, a bit uh, uneven state where one side is stopped and the other is not yet. <clears throat> uh, but but the good part is to highlight the good part is that we side by sidestepping create answer we also sidestep the whole bundle problem and we haven't made any exceptions or any and nothing works differently for the first transceiver than any other transceiver. And so you will see in the web IDL here. Um, so I have more slides to go through how this solves it. Uh, so I'm happy to go back to the earlier slides if anyone wants to comment uh, and then uh, I can push forward a little more. Uh, so there's also a new reject method here that's set, that's basically the old stop and it sets the stopped, it actually should say, it probably should say it sets both stopping and stopped in the sense that stopping is the local stop and stopped is the local and remote stop. We can bike shed, some people said, shouldn't stopping go to false once you go to stopped, we can bike shed that later, I think. Uh, but it works the same. But the benefit of this new reject method, it would throw an error in valid state error if you're not in have remote offer. So it's a little safer. Uh, it doesn't, but you would have to call reject and then roll back uh, your offer after that and don't do that. So it's much, much safer than it is today. And that lets people who still want to reject M lines the old um, way to still do that the, the most the most so important the, next slide. Uh, the most important takeaway here is that uh, there is such a thing as stopping before you are like fully stopped uh, and then right. how that is exposed in the api we, right. we can discuss further but but there needs to be some internal internal state that says i'm i'm either stopping or i'm stopped right uh, right. Just a question: Is there evidence that people are using stop? It was only recently added to Chrome, so I'm just wondering. No, it, it's not added to Chrome, is it? Chrome, Chrome doesn't have it. Right. Oh, okay. So if it's not in Chrome, you know, fewer people are using it, obviously. Um, so yeah, yeah I had a slide on why we need stop uh, earlier. I, That's why I covered it. <laughs> yeah, I was just wondering why we need. Re do we need necessarily reject or not? Oh, I see. Yes, yeah, so that's that's the point I was going to make later. Is I, I don't think we need reject, but I think we need to stop. Okay. Well, in, in order to move forward, I, I suspect I, I would approach it this way. This PR breaks up the existing stop into two methods, stop and reject, two functions for uh, two different use cases. One is for high level, uh, I'm done with the resources, clean them up. And the other one is reject this M line in the answer, please. 
And so by splitting them up, we, it allows us to talk about them separately. And uh, you know, if we want to talk about deprecating reject, I think that we could talk about that okay. after. Does Sounds that good. Cool. <clears throat> so um, while you're thinking about this, I can go through the remaining slides and we can come back and take questions uh, in case I have answers to some of your questions about how this would work. So this is with the PR. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. <clears throat> so how would, um, if you remember the slide from before, we're going to stop the answer on the answer side. We're going to call TC one stop and see what happens now. So if you see the uh, the one there, the little red part, we call TC one stop, and uh, we now end up in stopping state, not stopped state. So what happens uh, here is that well, the assumption of this chart is it's showing you state after this kind of whole thing has happened. So imagine that uh, TC one made some change unrelated. Calls an as, as set local description offer comes to the answer side as set remote description offer, <clears throat> but we've either already called TC one stop or we call TC one stop right after this, and that's the race. Um, so what ha so what happens now to solve it is that uh, if you see the monkey there holding its ear, that's the JSEP monkey. It does not listen to the fact uh, it does it only hear, knows about stopped. It does not know about stopping. So it says la la la. I'm just going to create an answer. That's totally fine. And my MacBook went into screen saver mode. Hold on, I'm back. Um, and so what happens here is that the negotiation completes. And uh, on the left, there's a little star in TC1. TC1 is neither stopping nor stopped yet because it hasn't heard anything about stopping. The only thing that everything appears normal, except uh, if it notices, it might notice that its TC1 receiver track has ended because it received an RTCP buy right. from the other side. <clears throat> <clears throat> Excuse me. So what happens after everything goes back to stable is that negotiation needed will kick up, kick up on the answer side, and roles will reverse, and this will uh, send out. Uh, well, this is immediately followed by next slide, basically. So what happens next is that stable is reached, <clears throat> negotiation needed is fired. Um, we're still TC one is still in stopping state, even though it says stopped in the diagram. There's a little star there because I, uh, I should have improved this slide to uh, show the state and do it dif two different points in time, but this slide doesn't uh, afford that. So this time the JSET monkey is listening because we have the special language that said when you're creating an offer, treat stopping as stopped. So JSEP says, okay, I'm gonna stop the port, uh, zero port, and that'll stop the offerer's uh, transceiver. Uh, well, th that will stop the transceiver on the left. Since so the roles are reversed now, it's actually the answer, right? So this is just a regular stop going the other way. And uh, when uh, the answer comes back, um, set remote description answer will still set stopped. So the uh, transceivers on both ends will end up in stopped state and everything's hunky-dory. And importantly, transceiver number two still works. So that's what we're going to solve. Next uh, slide. And it has the simple case, when I, you know, just to show that it still works the regular way. When the offer calls uh, TC1 stop, it still works because the JSON monkey is listening because of the special language we added that stopping should be treated as stopped in that case. And it's just a regular, uh, it's just as easy as it was before and no harm done. And again, uh, except that the TC1 will be in stopping state initially and only become stopped once it's back in stable. Uh, next. So here's the language. There's a, an actual PR, so I put in the language here. Uh, and uh, maybe people who want to can read this uh, while we do questions. Or should I uh, go through this? Basically, I, I mean, let me go through it. So when stopping is true, it indicates that this transceiver has irreversibly entered its stopping procedure, i.e. from a call to stop. Transceiver's sender will no longer send and its receiver will no longer receive. A stopping transceiver that is not stopped needs negotiation. Now that's a good part. So the updated, uh, the negotiation needed algorithm has this, an explicit line in this PR that says, if a transceiver is stopping but not stopped, it needs negotiation, returns true. That way, the goal is that once stopping, there are cases where you have fixed roles. Uh, not everyone uses negotiation needed. So you could end up in being in stopping state a long time, but the, but the, 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 the gravity pulls toward 
this trend saver should, once you have successful negotiation needed that starts with an offer from <clears throat> this end, you will end up in stop state. That's the goal. And even so, if you don't, I guess there's no harm done because you're not <clears throat> sending and you're not receiving. You can, uh, like the browser could free up uh, resources, the tracks ended, there's no encoding, there's no decoding. Like uh, it's, it's uh, th does it matter that it's not stopped other than it's Yeah, that was my yes. question. Uh, it, it does not, we do not free up resources until you're in stopped. Oh. And the reason for that is that, uh, well, the good news was that a lot of the setting uh, a um, session description algorithm, which is the long, big uh, set local description, set local answer, the whole thing, barely mentioned stopped, which is good. It has two places. I think they're just optimizations for creating some local transport objects. Uh, <clears throat> but as far as I could tell, uh, most of negotiation needed is highly orthogonal to whether something is stopped or not, which, and I tested this in Firefox today even, is that you can, if in Firefox today, <clears throat> I have a fiddle for this in the GitHub issue, you can receive, if you call, if, you know, if you call stop on the offer end, that's easy. I mean, you get a zero port offer. But if you call stop right before on the answer side, right before calling set remote description offer, then you have a perfectly valid offer that's not stopped that you're applying, but the uh, local transceiver has been stopped. In that case, and you called it even before set remote description offer, you'll still get events firing, right? You'll still see a track event for the track that was added. Right. So and you still be still added. You need, still need like transceiver objects to exist, right? But you're not sending, yeah. so you don't need an encoder. You're not receiving, right. so you don't need a decoder. You've, you've ended the receiving track, so you don't need an image buffer. Like anything expensive is gone. Uh, other okay. than you have to keep the transport port right. open, but you're using bundling. So you, yeah. you're going to have one port open all the time anyway, unless you're closing all of them, in which case, yeah. who cares? No, that's a good point. I see what you mean. That you, Internally, the browsers, yes, could clean up resources. We still have to have the important, uh, as far as API exposure, the transceiver will still be in the list of transceivers and the transceiver will still have a receiver track, but that track will be ended. So yes, you're right. Under the hood, you could clean up resources. True, good point. <clears throat> so the, the difference here between stopping and, um, uh, uh, stopping and uh, stopped is that the stopping says the transceiver that is stopping will cause future calls to create offer to generate a zero port and meet a description for the corresponding transceiver. As defined in JSEP, the user agent must treat a stopping transceiver as stopped for the purposes of JSEP only in this case. So that's the only way, place we trick JSEP basically. And it says, however, to avoid problems with bundle, a transceiver that is stopping but not stopped will not affect great answer. And then, um, and if you go back to stop, uh, the bottom one is says uh, basically that a stop transceiver will cause future calls to create offer an uh, or create answer to generate a zero port as before. <clears throat> and that's it. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> so this is the, <clears throat> the stop method now. Um, stop irreversibly marks the transceiver as stopping unless it's already stopped. And this will immediately cause transceiver sender to no longer send and receiver to no longer receive. Calling stop also updates the negotiation needed flag. <clears throat> and the note here says what I said earlier, a transceiver that is stopping but not stop will always need negotiation. In practice, this means that calling stop on a transceiver will cause the transceiver to become stopped eventually, provided negotiation is allowed to complete on both ends. Uh, next slide. And this is the reject method. <clears throat> and this is uh, almost like stop today. The note uh, is modified to say, this method may only be called between applying a remote offer and creating an answer um, <clears throat> to reject M lines. And, and then it goes to describe the bundle problem. Um, and it says to avoid this user should instead consider using the safer stop method. And yeah, next slide. So, the, so the takeaway, the takeaway yeah. is, is that the bundle foot gun is not avoided if you use reject. It's right. only avoided if you use stop. Well, it's better because by checking on the signaling state, uh, the method only works in, in the signaling state. So we right. don't have to treat, we don't have to work. It solves the stable problem. What happens if you call stop in stable? Because you can't reject in stable state, basically. And that, yeah. that solves an important problem because we don't know what's coming next. Is it going to be a set of description offer or a set remote description offer? So it solves that part. The only way you can get in trouble now with a foot gun, <clears throat> if you reject the first transceiver, 
Um, and then you roll back, basically. So you have to do a rollback to get in trouble now. And that's pretty much it. <clears throat> okay. Um, now, Henrik, you had a comment on reject somewhere in that stack? Uh, yes. So um, basically, the, the way I see it is the difference between stopping and 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 rejecting is that when you're stopping, you're waiting, you're, you're, you're sending an offer. So you're waiting for an answer to say for the other endpoint to acknowledge like, yes, I received the, the stop and it's thumbs up, right? Where, whereas if you reject, you're, you're sending the fact that you're stopped as part of the answer. So there's no acknowledgement. Um, so the difference is that there's a there's a point in time between being stopping and being stopped uh which means well it's another offer answer exchange i mean if, you, if you're using reject you're already in the in the state of sending an answer so like the the round half a round trip time to get there like if you're sending an answer you can send the offer as well uh but you have to wait for this to get an answer back uh there is there is some additional time where you could where you're at the, at the risk of glare. But uh, the way I see it is basically like an SDP ping. You send something, you get an answer back instead of just you send something. Uh, so it's, it's, I think it's, this is an optimization. You, you get rid of an offer answer exchange. Um, but I see very little benefit to, to what this achieves and it achieves this, this, you, you, skip an offer answer exchange, uh, that's, that's the good part. The bad part is suddenly the, our API users have to care, care about offer tagged and bundled. And it's, it's, right. it's still a foot gun. It's still yeah. an API that it's hard for me to get behind. And, and it's hard for me to imagine telling someone like, uh, oh, you should use this API. It's hard for me to imagine thinking, oh yeah, you should use the reject API in this case. Like I, right. I think I just say just use stop, and you don't have any problems. If you use reject, sure, and, and, then I, then we need to have like a, a half an hour lecture about <laughs> what this is. Right. So so my goal, um, my goal was to reduce the amount of enemies for this PR. <laughs> so I didn't want to remove any functionality. So um, yes, I I I really think that that could be discussed. Uh, separately, maybe Re reject only reflects what's existing, what's possible in the existing API. So, and if there are, there might need a broader audience. If we're going to remove functionality, then I could see maybe there are some. Like we we have a lot of uh, functionality that uh, has been has taken a lot of discussion to get you know like PR answer and other things that are not. There are people with different needs. I just want to make sure that no one uh, thinks this. Uh, to reject this PR because it removes something that they wanted. Um, so I think what this let, PR lets us do is to discuss that separately. Is what I hope. Yeah, and I, I'm fine. I'm fine with uh, uh, having that as a separate discussion. Like, like the 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 main <laughs> problem is that we're introducing a concept of being stopping before being stopped to right. avoid the bump. And I think that that's that's clearly the path forward. And like <clears throat> me opposing reject is not me opposing the solution to this problem. It's right, it's like right. follow up discussion. Just to be okay. clear, though, internally we even with uh, if we can clean up the API, we still need to have a concept of stopping separate from stopped uh, as internal slots. Yes. And uh, there are two reasons for that. One is because we need to keep track of the local stop because uh, in cases like fixed roles. You might uh, end up being in that state for a while, and you have to. You might have separate nego several negotiations completing from the initiated from the other side. That still doesn't bring you to stop. Okay. And the so, other one is that ASAP refers to the word stopped, and we cannot change so, ASAP. So, so here's what I'd like to propose: <clears throat> Can we try to get consensus on on the two pieces here? One is the stopping uh, addition of stopping, and the other is reject. Does that does that make sense as a way to kind of figure out where we are? Sure. OK. So I guess the first question is, are there any objections to what Jan Ivar has proposed for introducing stopping? Does anybody have a problem with doing that? 
Okay. Silence. Okay. So, uh, can we please record that there is consensus for for that portion of it for introducing stopping? Okay. So the second question is: uh, Do people uh, have any uh, issues with reject? Uh, I I do. Yeah, I do as well. Yeah. So uh, I I have a. It's kind of uh, how, how to put it. it. It kind of assumes that in order to, it, it kind of violates the, assum the assumption. That removing it violates the assumption that you you will be able to do anything in STP state machine with uh, current STP implementation would do. I want, but. Uh, that that assumption was always a very weak one anyway so i'd be happy with losing it actually happy with I, not I having have... reject harold i would i would be happy i i would be i wouldn't spend the uh, many milliseconds trying to fight for reject now okay so losing it would make me happy and, and the way I view SDP is, is SDP is a tool we use to achieve what we want to with our APIs. Uh, just because something is possible to do in SDP, that doesn't mean that it's a good idea for the APIs that we have, right? And just because there is a foot gun doesn't mean we have to expose it. No. Right. Uh, I would say that uh, I think Mozilla is also okay to lose reject, the only person I would probably check with is Colin, uh, if he has any use cases for uh, for being uh, having to re reject an answer. Well, it, it's like it's like an optimi uh, optimization, like you don't have to yeah. do another follow up yeah. offer answer, but, but like, yeah. I'm kind of like, so what, like, doesn't matter. And then you mentioned, I hadn't even thought about it, you said, if you use reject, and then you do a rollback, like, does this add even more complexity? Like, does this mean yeah. that if you use this API, no. you can't do rollback? No, no. Uh, the, neither stop, 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 both stopped and stopping cannot be rolled back. And that's already true for stopping in the spec today. So what I'm saying is that the only way to get into the foot gun, uh, to get out of the safety zone, basically, is to then call uh, stop and then do a rollback because the spec w won't allow you to roll back out of stopped which right. means you're now in stopped state and you may now receive, um, uh, but, but that's sort of. Um, yeah, rollback was never perfect and can't be but, made. But, so. but you've all, by, by calling reject in the first place, you've already taken upon yourself to know which one is the offer tagged transceiver yeah. and not stop that one. So it's an it's a expert API basically, like. Yeah, and, and and I I want I want to hide the concept of offer tag because I think it's madness. Yeah. <laughs> and if we can't yeah. fix JSEP yeah. to say that offer tag isn't a thing, then we should just avoid it. Okay, yeah. so here's here's what I'd like to propose based on this discussion, that the uh, the the part of this PR that relates to stopping, right? We can we can just apply it, right? And then we should but we should separate the out the portion relating to reject. I guess, right. into a separate PR. Uh, and as of okay. now, there's no consensus for that PR, but I guess, mm -hmm. uh, if, you know, we, you can ask around Yanivar and, you know, maybe make okay. the case yeah. later if, yeah. if it turns out we're, we missed something. Does that make sense? Cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I must say, I mean, I think I'm in favor of losing it as well. The only thing is that people who really want this would now have to munge SDP. So that's the only thing. Right. Me back. <clears throat> okay. Great. That sounds great. So we don't uh, need a backup plan? Well, actually, um, unless okay. um, uh, proposal A here, one of the workaround ideas, if you remember the workaround problem, was that um, proposal A might still have some general value to people, and that you can call add transceiver with an ineligible true flag mm -hmm. that basically has a special property that this transceiver is ineligible for reuse by add track. Just wanted to throw that out there if someone likes that idea. But other than that, we can skip this. OK. So anybody uh, want to express enthusiasm for this? No, I, I don't like it. 
Okay. All right. <clears throat> All right. Let's um, skip this one. Okay. So now, uh, what, right. what about? <clears throat> or maybe that's part of the discussion. What about the implementation plans for this? Firefox oh. intends to implement this. But you, where, uh, when this, what you're talking about, stopping stopped, right? Stopping and stopped. Yeah, I think we have yeah. to, we, we must solve this. <clears throat> uh, so uh, I have a. Uh, <clears throat> Excuse me. I have, a, I have buy-in from our uh, transceiver implementer, basically, that this is a good idea to, to do. And do you have a rough timeline in mind? Or? I, it, I don't anticipate it being that hard. Uh, it's basically removing some functionality in Create Answer. So um, soon. <clears throat> How about all that? All right, are we on the next slide? Were there yeah. more questions? Uh, wait, oh, cool. wait, wait, wait. I think Dom was asking. Yeah, uh, is there, and if we only have one implementation, <laughs> we're going to get stuck with this. So. Right. I, I think your question was for to Harald and maybe Henrik. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, we <laughs> we have some real good things to adjust. Yeah, my my position is I want this to be implemented, uh, but we're sort of in between projects a little bit, and I'm like I'm not sure what we can promise. Like if we're talking short term, uh, yeah. Bernard, do you have any any? Uh, yeah, we do. We're still in our reorg phase, but um, we we do care a bunch. We do care about a bunch of these things, um, but uh, until we're finished with this deck, I, I don't want to claim prioritization between all of the things we're about to talk about. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but I, I I would say that we uh, in general we care about cleaning up rollback and 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 that stuff. Yeah, I I I think I think WebRTC the WebRTC API is not complete without like perfect negotiation because yes. of all these problems. Um so like I, I want to say yes and then like uh yeah, but hard to hard to know. Yeah, well yeah, especially without understanding what else we've taken on and, and that we're about to agree to in this deck. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, do, I, I, yeah. I think the remaining the issues are more uh, API fixes, actually, right? Than uh, big changes. We don't have UN on the call, do we? No. Okay. Okay. Thanks for the input. All right. So uh, there are four more issues, I think, and uh, the other discoveries from uh, this was, and one is that the current API for restarting. ICE uh, works poorly without negotiation needed. Uh, and here's an example of how you might write it today, where <clears throat> you have your own negotiation needed function. And then separately, you receive an on ICE connection state change to fail. And from that callback, you might just call your own negotiation needed function directly, which is a, a cute trick. Uh, but it could be a separate function as well. And uh, you basically call the function that you initiate, you call to create offer with, and you pass in an options argument, and that allows you to put in ice restart true. And that's clever, except it, it will fail if ice connection state change ever fires outside of stable state. And that would be worse, it would be an intermittent, so you might not even catch that. Uh, furthermore, if what if your negotiation needed uses rollback to implement uh, perfect uh, negotiation? Your ice restart just got rollback, and what do you do now? You would need to write application logic to persist that that intent until the offer is applied and not rolled and not rolled back by the other pair. And end users, web developers will most likely never do this or get it right, and that leaves them open to intermittence. It's also hard to polyfill in a way that caches all known corner cases that lead to races and common apps. And uh, we'll see this uh, with the web platform tests that we have. Uh, next slide. So the proposal here is to add a restart ice, a first class restart ice method to your connection that effectively sets an internal slot for restart ice and fires negotiation needed. Importantly, that's only cleared in set remote description answer, meaning that negotiation, uh, a random negotiation has completed for starting from your end. 
and we've already implemented this in Firefox behind the pref, but it's not landed yet. Um, I was hoping to do that before the meeting, but it's still in the queue there. Uh, and the, uh, but you, you can still look at, there's a link here to the web platform test that we wrote for this. And it has these important properties that it survives rollback and it causes uh, a nice restart, which it tests obviously. It also survives a remote offer. It fires negotiation needed and it returns a Boolean, whether you end, calling it ended up doing anything and um, whether the state changed the internal slot. And it also checks that uh, there's some corner cases where there might be a remote ISO restart coming in and uh, there's code to say, okay, good. Uh, we don't have to do another round then we're satisfied by that. Uh, there's also some uh, overlap with the old API that uh, so you can actually use ice restart false and create offer to override uh, this ice restart. If that ends up succeeding, uh, you can cancel it that way um, if we don't get rid of the old API. And lastly, uh, it survives the remote offer containing a partial restart, which is actually possible to do in SDP because these, the port zero is per transceiver. So this method does all that. And it was actually, it didn't, it only took a day or two to, to implement actually, because in Firefox anyway. So we yeah, it, 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 it looks that. like if, if, if you're already implementing ice restart uh, today, then, then the restart ice method should take a few hours to right. just add an internal slot, right. keep track of it. It, it's. I think probably you spent more time writing all these these uh, tests than. Right. Than to do it. Yeah. Like right. The tests were the harder part. Yes, <laughs> and they're written already. So okay. um, anyone yeah. that comes second will have the benefit of the tests, and and this puts the restart method up behind uh, above and makes it part of the application methods rather than the low level methods. Yes. Yeah, so uh, and that was the only slide do, for that. I think uh, we should do that and then do this. It seems like such a simple thing to do, and it avoids uh, these problems. Okay. Um, so, are, are there any objections to taking this PR twenty one sixty nine? Okay. Please record that this one has consensus as well. Great. Um, yeah. So, so now there's a we're down to a triumvirate of. Uh, race issues that have to do with the JavaScript event loop a little bit. And um, and this is where I actually have to explain how I did perfect negotiation needed. So um, please, if there's anything unclear here, ask along the way. Um, so this, without further ado, this is the polite peer signaling strategy, uh, where one side, this is how to implement uh, solve glare using rollback, basically. And we have one side one side being polite and the other side being impolite. Uh, the polite peer will use rollback to always yield to an incoming uh, collision, basically, an incoming offer from the impolite peer. Um, so if you look at the JavaScript here, if we get a description, we basically check if the description is an offer, but we're not in stable state, then we need to do something different. And so the only difference in, inside that if statement, and we, if we are the impolite peer, we simply just ignore the other side. We're the impolite one. We're just gonna pretend that never happened. So we return. That's the if not polite return statement. So all of the rest of the code here following is the implementation of the polite pair. And we basically, there's an odd construct there. We, do, we use promise all to, to call two methods uh, on the pair connection object right away. Uh, and that's set local description with rollback. And then we basically rolling back our offer that we had because we were not unstable. And that takes us back to stable so we can then call set remote description with the incoming description. And that sounds good. And that takes care of uh, things. So the only remaining question here is why did we have to use promise all? Why couldn't we just await set local description rollback and then await followed by uh, await uh, set remote description description? And uh, the answer there is in the uh, last line here, which is if a candidate comes in and we call add ice candidate, um, and I, that can happen sometimes uh, and there's an incoming offer. Every offer usually is chased by a couple of candidates that belong to that offer right after it. 
Right. So, and we're inside an async function here, which is really just a promise chain. So what happens is that uh, that that candidate that, that basically IO on message may fire again before this first IO on message has finished. And um, the good news is the peer connection implements an internal operations queue, which means that you can already call asynchronous methods uh, one after the other synchronously on the peer connection. And the peer connection will dutifully put this on a queue and only process one at a time uh, so that uh, the if you call two methods, the second one will only run after the when the first one completes, which is great. Which is uh, why this trick works. If we we use um, promise all, uh, and it's almost explain easier to explain the workaround before explaining the problem. If we use promise all, uh, both set local description rollback and set remote description um, description get queued on the peer connection object, which means that they're guaranteed to run before any other method you then call on peer connection will get to run. If we don't do this, if we just keep, wait one and wait the other, we leave a time window where add ice candidate could come in beforehand. And that will mean we're not in have remote offer yet and that method will fail. So, and this works except, you know, you have to use promise all and know about all this stuff and who's gonna do that. So the proposal is to fix this so we don't need to use promise all in these races. And all these three issues are variants of this. So next slide. So in this particular case, to solve rollback, we can have a, I think the API we had for rollback was already ugly. It set local description and you bring in your own object instead of the description and it has a type of rollback. So why don't we just pass this as an options argument to set remote description? It's simpler and it ends up being race proof because now there's only one method uh, that has to complete. Uh, and basically set remote description and instead of invalid state offer, if we're not in the right, if this is an offer and we're not in a not in stable state, roll it back to stable. <clears throat> so that's basically the proposal. There's actually two parts to it. Um, one is that set remote, set remote description takes this options argument. <clears throat> And the, uh, the basically, it says what I just said, I think, making sure I didn't uh, miss anything. Uh, so, yeah, so basically now once set remote description is enqueued, and ice can, candidate cannot beat it because, uh, and there's a JavaScript node here that when you're using a wait, everything inside an await uh, async function, the first part of that function runs synchronously until you reach the first await statement, including right. the expression that's immediately after the await statement also runs synchronously. That's important. So we're only awaiting the result. Uh, of, so we're actually calling PC set remote description with description with an, a rollback true argument synchronously. In this case, we're merely waiting for its result. And that makes it uh, glare proof. Question now, if, yeah. if if we if if considering uh, only Firefox has implemented rollback, but if if one is to start from scratch and implements set remote description with rollback, is there any reason to implement set local description with rollback? Right? Is there a reason to give users of the APIs uh, a possibility of making a mistake here? Is there any any use case for rolling back where we're not actually rolling back because we're receiving a, a remote offer. I, I think that um, that would be a beautiful optimization. And I think, uh, I don't know if I can speak for all of Mozilla, but I think we, I, I, I think we would be okay with considering deprecating that if that's what the working group wants. Um, but again, you know, you're talking about removing functionality, which I was trying hard to avoid. I want okay. you to solve these problems and then we can pare down. I mean, I, I guess rollback is feature uh, at risk already. So, right. Um, so yeah. if we can implement, if someone implements this version first and not the other one, I guess the old one wouldn't be at risk and this one would not be, I guess. Okay. So the, the alternative proposal here is proposal B is to always do this implicitly on set remote description. Then there's no API change to surface at all. But when you right. say do this implicitly, you mean? Meaning uh, that uh, assume that rollback true is implicitly true always. OK. okay. You don't need an argument. Yeah, the, what you would the, lose then, go ahead. 
the difference is that uh, it would change the behavior of uh, right. of certain mode description, which, which uh, would then uh, something that previously rejected would then accept. Yes. So the, the breakage would be that where you would get an invalid state error before the engine would now try to roll back in some cases back to stable and uh, only for offers because it's only useful for offers because you can't apply answers in stable. So for offers uh, where you would expect an invalid state error, which might have caught a programming error early, uh, the engine will now assume that, uh, oh, you're probably you're trying to roll back and do it implicitly and automatically. And so that's, that's, that's the loss basically <clears throat> from this. Considering, uh, considering the case of, of like the, the breaking change here is, is by, by rolling flat back implicitly, in, implicitly, it's less clear that you made a mistake. Right. Uh, but considering, considering the, the only use case we're breaking is you made a mistake. Uh, I, I, I kind of, I don't know. I, I kind of like this being implicit uh, because if it ties into the negotiation needed, and, and then like if we have perfect negotiation, uh, but I can also see how it's it could me uh, lead to unexpected uh, right things if it's not explicit. So I, I can kind of go either way on this one. My initial reaction was I like the implicit one because. It only applies when you're making a mistake, but I can also see that, hey, now you don't know you're making a mistake. Right. I, I guess the issue with the implicit one is that rollback isn't necessarily obvious. Yes. So you might the JavaScript might find itself in a state that you know, it wasn't expecting, <clears throat> maybe. But then since there's no other way to interpret their intent, you could also interpret their intent to mean that, well, you're trying to apply uh, uh, and a uh, remote offer here, but you're not in you know in stable state. So uh, what did you mean? Uh, maybe you meant ignore what I already have. So I mean it still works as an API. I think it was just uh, it's not entirely it's a little different semantics than uh, the legacy API the existing be uh, be behavior. Okay. Um, so what, uh, what do we want to do here is, let, let me ask a question. Uh, let me ask first about proposal A or proposal B. Um, it, it is, let me put it this way. Uh, is, uh, uh, are there people who feel that proposal B should be preferred over proposal A? Somewhat. Yeah, I'm, I'm like. I mean, not, not the hill I would die upon is the expression. Uh, uh, Harold, <laughs> can you speak up? Uh, it's kind of the expression is not. It's not the hill I would die upon. But uh, yeah, the implicit, the, the, just just do it sounds sensible. When you say just do it, which one would you prefer to B. do? B. Okay. As are there people who prefer <laughs> A over B? Sounds like proposal B is preferred by everybody. Marginally. What? Yes. Marginally. Yes. Marginally. Like I could go with either one. Okay. All right. Uh, is there oh. some other concerns about proposal? Other I've heard some concerns about proposal B that it could introduce unexpected behavior. Um, well, it's less it's less explicit, I guess. Right. <clears throat> um, but uh, first. Uh, there's also a proposal C, which would be to do nothing. And I don't hear, it sounds like everyone is on board with doing either A or B. Doing, so that's yeah, good. doing, is yeah, that, like that. Is, uh, anyone object to that concept? So we want either A or B, right? Yes. Okay. The, the benefit of B is it abstracts away this even further. Like you don't have to add a boilerplate application logic where you always have to check the state. And if it's, it's the case, use rollback, otherwise don't. Uh, so it it's, makes the API, like you can't misuse it. Well, I mean, you can, but. It makes the API do one thing, no matter what the state is. Yeah. 
Right. And you can polyfill it, right? I mean, you, you can, if you're in the wrong state, you can check that before calling the method. Yeah. Uh, on the yeah. other hand, it does, does make rollback an essential feature of set remote description, right? Right. So yeah. if there's some doubt about whether we're going to, are going to do rollback well, that kind of integrates it in. Well, it's a sub feature of set remote description. You can right. still you know, be yeah. at risk, I guess. Right. Yeah, that's a, that's that's a good point. That that it it makes it makes uh, uh, not supporting rollback means this operation behaves differently in different uh, browsers. Right. Different browsers. Uh, I think that that would be an argument for going with proposal <coughs> A. Uh, but if it's going to be implemented, I think B is is good. Yeah, and. Uh, you know, dictionary members are optional anyway, so even if you were to specify rollback true, if the browser doesn't implement it, you probably wouldn't know. Oh, right. Mm -hmm. that's, that's a good point. But you would get an invalid state error. Yeah. Set, set remote description is only has one parameter. <clears throat> right. So it sounds, you know, I'm, I'm happy to either. I mean, uh, it sounds like the group wants proposal B. I'm happy to do that. Um, can we discuss implementations plan for rollback? Well, so um, well, I, we have one. <laughs> yeah, um, this is an item that Microsoft is willing to allocate resources for, but uh, you know, it's not a simple thing. So I don't know, you know, how long it would take. Um, We'd be happy to extend uh, help and uh, resources to anyone who wants, wants to do this, but uh, uh, short of actually <laughs> writing code, I think. <clears throat> like we have uh, web platform tests and, uh, and uh, I think they're fairly thorough already on rollback from our rollback efforts. <clears throat> So we we so we have we have uh, Lord Bernard. You said you said you're willing to. Yeah, basically, design. Maxim's team has this on. Is has a set of fairly high priority. Uh, yeah, I mean I, that that sounds great. I mean, it's, but it's it's not going to. This isn't. This is one of the more complicated things, though. So, like, uh, not going to bet that it will be completed in you know a few months or something. Mm. It might might take. It's probably the kind of thing that will require. A, a good spec code review, you know, all the usual. I'm happy to, I'm happy to code review. Hmm. Yeah. No. I, I would also say that code review. Yeah. Firefox has not implemented PR answer. Um, so I would say that if you do end up, if implementers run into problems with rollback and PR answer, it might be worthwhile to salvage rollback for every case other than PR answer. Hmm. Does that make sense? Yeah, that, yeah, that that's kind of a separate issue of how much rollback to do. But uh, <clears throat> just trying to get a sense. Uh, so your concern, Dom, is just whether this will get done. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, more specifically, if we do want to go to proposed recommendation by November. Well, so let me to... let me put it this way. I think this in. This increases the chance that rollback will get done because now it's part of a more attractive set of things. I mean, if, if you understand what I'm saying, Dom, I mean, rollback is already at risk. So I don't think this makes it more at risk than it was before. <laughs> I think point. that's a, gr a great point. Yeah, that's a good point. It increases the motivation, in fact, for doing it, I think. So how about this proposal? How about we say we're going to accept proposal B? Um, since that seems to be what people uh, want to do. And we record that as the consensus of the group. Are there any objections to that? I mean, we'll have to deal with, you know, figuring out what's at risk of whatever anyway, but. Okay, is that is that okay as a resolution? Sounds good. Okay, and I mean, 
I can and I can look into restart ice tomorrow. See if I have time before I. Okay. So yeah, Ivan, <coughs> do you have? No, that's good. That sounds good. So if we go with B, then uh, I can modify this PR to remove all the the options, dictionaries, and that kind of stuff. Okay. And simplify things. Yeah, that's simple. Great. I like simple. Okay, so, uh, <coughs> so next slide then. And you can you can feature detect whether you're doing it whether the platform is capable of doing it by set, yeah. setting a local offer and then and then applying a remote of uh, applying a fake remote offer. Yes, good point. Yeah. We should make sure that we have different errors for the two cases. All right. So this is just, uh, you can skip this slide then, because that's okay. the uh, existing PR language <clears throat> with the rollback Boolean. All right, so <clears throat> the second issue with the polite peer exercise revealed that there was a similar race in negotiation needed, um, meaning that negotiation needed itself is actually glare prone. So you know you typically write PC on negotiation needed, and then you do a wait create offer. And then, um, I had to add a new line here after that. It says, if PC signal state is not stable, then return. Why? Well, this function was guaranteed to always be called from stable state only, and that's good, except await create offer means uh, create offer takes time. So by the time we come back to this function, uh, uh, we may not longer be unstable because uh, there's a race here with an incoming offer, <clears throat> right. which means that set local description will fail with, uh, uh, and the third line will fail with invalid state offer. And, <clears throat> and this can happen. I mean, a remote offer can come in between create offer and set local description. And um, but who's going to know or remember that or uh, over some rare intermittent? So uh, this is the API we have. Uh, but instead, I propose a simpler and safer API that is hopefully alluring enough that um, people, if they use it, are you know at least we fix this glare problem for them, and that's um, basically to reduce the exist the top function to the bottom one where we simply call PC set local description with no arguments, and two things go into making that happen. <clears throat> uh, proposal A is basically one of them, which is, says that set local description without SDP implicitly calls create offer or answer if needed instead of invalid state error. And uh, one more, uh, set local description without type in first type from the current signaling state. Uh, actually, the current st the signaling state in the in, in the peer connection queue at the moment it gets executed on a queue. So if we're in a state that you know, you know have a remote offer, then it's an answer. Otherwise, it's an offer. Um, and that means that just calling PC set local description implicitly will create from negotiation needed will implicitly create the offer and just set it. <laughs> Keep it simple, stupid is sort of the idea there. And um, any thoughts on this? I mean, uh, I think there are more slides. Let me see. Yeah, so, so I can go on. Um, if you go to the next slide, we can come back. Okay. <clears throat> and uh, this slide just points out that this is not that different from today. Uh, fun fact, you may not know that the SDP argument to set local description is already unused. It's a ritual from days past. Uh, and in fact, uh, providing a description is identical to pro calling create offer first and then calling set local description only with a type of offer because the spec already says to fish out the last created offer in turn slot and use that. In fact, if you pr try to set anything else, it'll fail. So again, and the same is true for the answer. So the next natural step here, I would argue, is that you know if last created offer is null, instead of rejecting, um, you can just invoke the algorithm right there, create offer algorithm, before proceeding. So this, uh, you know, these two slides uh, mention the proposal A and B both. So, uh, and it's 100% backwards compatible, uh, and set remote description will remain unchanged because there's no such uh, implicit behavior there. Okay, so uh, what is what are people uh, thinking here? Uh, I like this. I think uh, the create offer and create answer and set local description um, are really uh, one operation split into right. two to enable SDP munging, which which should be or is prohibited. But 
So, so having a, a race-free alternative uh, that gets rid of this historical reason to, to do them separately uh, is it seems like yeah, of course. Um, and in terms of implementing it, I think I think it's easy, so, and I, I'm happy so to. So, which do one it. do you like, Henrik, A or B? Uh, so the the wait, which one's which? I. Proposal A and proposal B is proposal I, B. I, is I want a I want type to be uh, explicit, so that you say whether it's an offer or an answer, rather than it being because uh, uh, otherwise you have a you have a hidden input to this function where so if you're debugging code and you see someone calling this function, you don't know if they uh, which which step is it if you don't. So look it sounds it. like you're preferring A. Yes. Any other opinions on A versus B? Let me ask this: Is are there any? Is there anybody here who prefers B over A? Well, I, I would I would prefer B over A <coughs> simply okay. because it's a much nicer API than having to set local description and having to remember to create this uh, uh, fake immediate description that only has a type in it. it seems a bit so ugly. You, do you think do you think the application yeah. logic would be? Uh... If signaling state else, right, like doing exactly the same thing, or, or... I think we can infer from the, the the state what what is being asked. Because because yeah. when you do the you, there's two different things you have to do next though. So you have to have to switch on switch on the state anyway, because if it's not, so then you have to send it. If it, right, right. If it's not, so then you, then you just. Oh, exactly. if it's not for you have to send it if it, if it's an answer. Yeah. Also, if you have any any bugs or any races somewhere, and and uh, <coughs> you're assuming that the type is one thing without without uh, checking, then you won't wouldn't get the uh, error thrown that you're in the wrong signaling state. You would just it would like you think it's creating an offer, but it's really it's creating an answer. Uh, but, so that's dangerous. But, but the argument has no value, all right? It doesn't. It's not like you sometimes will call it with a different value. You always have to c provide the correct value, otherwise you get an exception or a, an error, which seems. Yeah, you know, but yeah, but but so if you're if we're merging this, then you are you're implicitly creating an offer or you're implicitly creating an answer as part of setting the description. So so you are. It does have a return value, and it has different return values depending on which input it has right either either you say give me an offer or you say give me an answer and depending on if you get an offer or you get an answer you do different things right but but you can't you can't um you can't say give me an offer or give me an answer because one of them will always fail depending on what state you're in so this that like bernard pointed out the, the assumption is already that the javascript no, developer has to know what state they're in before they call the method Right. <clears throat> so I think it's a low value qualifier that basically says, I know what I'm doing. That's the point of the argument. Right. Yeah, it's not, it's not saying that you have, uh, that you have to, that you never provide the type. It's just saying that it, it allows you to uh, go forward if you don't have a type, right? Well, if we only go with proposal A, then you have to provide a type. Right. So proposal B gets rid of that requirement because. So, so proposal B means you, you, you're still free to uh, supply a type and get the error. But if you don't, then it will, it will assume the type was this. Right. Yes. OK, I'm fine oh, good with point. that. Yeah. That's, then right. I'm fine with that. Cool. I'm fine with that. Thanks, Bernard. That was a good clarification there. OK, so uh, based on this discussion, do we have is there, are there objections to proposal B? Okay, uh, please record that proposal B has consensus. Okay, uh, why don't we go to 2221? All right, <clears throat> so this was the only case that was not covered in my blog <clears throat> that FIPO pointed out that <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, uh, he has more experience with SFUs, and SFUs can be 
um, a different beast to deal with uh, when you're a client. <clears throat> and right. uh, it seems like a common setup is that the SFU is call is so-called pushy. It means that they'll they're always the offerer and they'll send an offer. Right. And then wait, I have a better one. And then they send a second offer right away. And it just keeps giving you offers and you have to basically swallow them. <clears throat> and one strategy for that is what I call the FIFO peer, first in, first out peer, where it's basically uh, we implement uh, <clears throat> IO on message. Excuse me. <clears throat> and um, we get a description and we know that it's uh, always an offer. And uh, excuse me one second. Sorry, too much talking this meeting. <clears throat> so, um, and basically the strategy here is to enqueue all the methods we need to get back to stable state immediately. So we do a promise all, we set the remote description, we create the answer, <clears throat> we call second local description with this special mode that I covered um, uh, earlier as a fun fact where you set in type the uh, answer. We cannot provide the argument from create answer, obviously, because we just we're calling these methods synchronously, so we don't have the answer yet. But luckily, this works because um, we can queue all these three methods on uh, set lo the last set, set local description will pick up the last created answer internal slot, and this will just work. Mm -hmm. And this solves an important. Uh, this gets us back to stable before any second offer can come in, while we're busy responding to the first offer. So even with all the proposals that uh, we've agreed to so far, we still can't totally get rid of promise all in this case. Um, we can call, we still have a uh, set remote description. This is the code below here. Uh, promise all set local description, set remote description, sorry, uh, followed by a set local description with no arguments. So mm -hmm. this, this um, I basically, there's another proposal here to, get, to fix this as well. If we go to the next slide. And this is a bit wordy method, basically, that um, it, we basically have a set remote and local description method that, that basically does this. Yikes. So there's an alternative um, strategy, too, which, okay. is, which is that you, act, you just uh, process the incoming messages as, as, you, <laughs> as they come in. And OK, if the because that that's why we let set remote description be allowed in uh, in uh, in have have remote offer mode uh, state so if you if if you want to do fifo you you do the you do the all uh, if you don't if you want to do last uh, uh, last one uh, under the under the wire wins then you don't need it. Right. Well, I, I guess uh, another strategy would be uh, rolling back what you did and then only respond to the the last offer you have. Yeah. And I guess yeah. yeah. As long as you have to tolerate uh, new offers in have remote description, then mm -hmm. you don't need rollback. You just need to look at <clears> it. <throat> or it, it amounts to the same thing, actually. But what I wanted to solve was that the API uh, would be receptive to methods sooner without running into the signaling state. Uh, uh, these signaling state collisions was basically the idea, and uh, it depends on depending on how we feel about these. I'm all, in this slide. I'm also making the case that basically this show this shows that our negotiation methods were were built for a different time when. It was important to, to be able to have these as discrete steps because we might want to reject M lines, for example, which we've now gotten rid of reject. So there's really no, so what are the remaining reasons why you need to do this in, in multi step methods? That's sort of the argument for this PR. Uh, two, two points. Uh, so one is, is yes, like a lot of these things that are today four steps are really just like two steps or like like right whenever you do an offer answer you kind of copy paste uh, doing this and whenever you set the remote description offer you always follow that by create answer and set local description answer 
and uh, like I, I I don't really see so so this this sort of makes sense in in this to just yeah it's really something you always do so why not put them in one step um, so it's, and it's would be simple to implement so so that's I think that's a good idea uh, uh, so one thing like if if we want to be lazy and not do this one argument against this is so it's about pushy SFUs um, and so if if we implement perfect negotiation i don't think we would ever have a, a pushy peer because the peers keep track of signaling state and I, I don't think you would end up with this unless i'm mistaken well uh the case i think uh henrik that i typically see is I I the um the conference unit is making the offer because it's the only one who knows how many people are in the conference but like think of the beginning of a conference when people are constantly coming in Right, yeah. if people are added and that, so it's constantly sending out these. It needs to add people, need M lines, right, for all the different people that are showing up. So right. that's, I think, the scenario, right, Yannibar? Yes, yeah, sorry, I was muted. Yes, <clears throat> yeah. that's the case. So that's so right. it does happen a lot. I mean, this is a real. Yeah, okay. I'm not sure how to. My 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 point my point was that if if like perfect negotiation is framed in terms of peer to peer. And if if an F of U does something outside of perfect negotiation, it, it does it doesn't keep track of signaling state. It just keeps pushing with new offers. You could you could argue that well, this is an F of U use case, and the F of U could just tell the application, hey, use promise at all. Uh, but I think this is like a nice API even outside of pushy S of U use cases, and and also pushy S of uses is 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 a use case we should care about, I guess. So I'm just contra contradicting myself. <laughs> yeah, and I'm happy to bike shed. I, mean, I agree the name is a bit long. Oh, it no. does have the nice properties that you're in stable state both before and after this method. Oh, I, 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 I kind of think that it's, a, it's an optimization right. that uh, forces a certain style of negotiation. And uh, I don't like that. It feels wrong to munch it this much effort into one thing if, for me it seems it feels like it's it's uh, it's doing something that's very easy to do anyway or like like it, it doesn't seem to add much value right. on one hand but on the other hand it doesn't it's not that difficult to implement but like this would be the other things presented here i think are sort of a higher higher priority and this one seems like well if we have time we can add it because why not it's it seems nice but it's it doesn't seem like this is needed for perfect negotiation like no i mean if you have a pushy sfu then okay take take care of the fact that it's pushy yeah i mean uh, you be if you have pushy sfu basically you have to decide whether your implementation is first first past the post or 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 uh, serial uh, and uh, I, I don't think it's the API's business to enforce the choice. Right. This would be a method, though, in, in addition to the existing methods. And uh, the only issue would be, are people aware of this race today, I guess? is Because uh, well, it's easy to, I agree, it's easy to do without this method, but it's also easy to do wrong. So that would be my argument. <clears throat> yeah, I think we've done it wrong. <laughs> yeah, I, okay. I I think I think people probably make mistakes. It's just based on my impression of how 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 detailed knowledge people usually have about these things. But that's just. But you feeling. would see an occasional uh, invalid state error in that case, I guess. So you would be able to learn this after a while. Um, I think Henrik posted a good comment uh, on the notes here. And can a peer be pushy? So I, I guess people think that if this only applies to the pushy SFU case, uh, I guess the expectation is that you're supposed to know a little more what you're doing if you have an SFU. Is yeah, that... that was that was my point. That that mm -hmm. this this is outside of a perfect negotiation. Like this is an SFU being pushy use case. It's perfectly possible right. to drive the API to being pushy too. I mean, create offer, uh, create offers at local send. Uh, Create offer. Yeah. Set so, uh, oh. add track. Create offer. Set local. 
Yeah, like you can roll you, back basically. You can, you can, yeah, you can, you can send that offers for you to roll <laughs> back. Or is this a problem? Uh, well, ro you wouldn't, rolling back would be kind of which, the the problem here is that people are joining and you want them to show up quickly. So that's you know the more stuff you do, uh, the but, worse. But you, but you could have a peer acting as a, a pushy SFU, if you will, or at least pushy that Carl described though, using rollback is that someone else joined. I'm gonna just roll back my state and send another offer if that's your setup. So you could program it this way, but yeah, you would have to use promise all to be yeah. race free. Yeah, I, I don't think that would work though, because you wouldn't even know how many people joined. So you wouldn't mm -hmm. you have to add it, the right number of M lines and you wouldn't even know that. So 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 would could so you so you could be are you saying that you could be a pushy peer if you if you implement the perfect negotiation and you use the APIs the way that you the Janiver proposes? Would you ever have a pushy peer? I, I don't. I personally don't think so. For a conference server scenario, I think it's the conference server that has to be pushy because it it has unique knowledge of how many people are in the conference. Nobody else knows how many M lines there are. Because because if 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 uh, the perfect negotiation has this problem, then I think then I would argue for adding this API uh, for the sake of completeness and for sake of having APIs that are never racy. Um, but if it's just a use case for for uh, someone is doing imperfect negotiation, then yeah. I think nice to have but not mm. essential. Yeah, it is a weird use case because it's it basically you're saying the SFU shouldn't have to wait for the answer; it should just be able to send offers continuously. Um, right. So you're saying the SFU right. is not implementing uh, perfect negotiation, basically. Uh, right. right. It isn't. And, but, and uh, moreover, this because it doesn't want to wait. Right. It just it just right. wants. It, it's essentially think of it as it's sending events to the peers saying here's how many M lines you have continuously, because um, yeah. it's it can change like right it can change all the time. You have a big conference, people are coming in and out. You know. It's, so can we can we agree that like uh, good idea, but but not promise resources for it, and then you know worst case. Well, it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, the big question is: Should we change the spec and the expectation that there's some chance that it, you know, will have multiple implementations? Yeah, I'm, I'm more like saying, "Hey, we could maybe implement this. Let's see." So, I would say we are at the stage where a nice to have is probably a nice to have later. <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Okay. Well, I guess we can icebox it. I would. I would prefer not to add, not to add it to the spec, frankly. Okay. Yeah. Right. Uh, okay, I, I put it last in the slides, and uh, it did not. It, to be fair, it did not come up when I was looking at perfect negotiation, and it seems to only apply in this uh, pushy SFU case. Yeah, yeah, I'm not hearing consensus for this. Although, of course, uh, nobody can stop you from doing it anyway, Yanibar. But uh, putting. Well, I think if we don't if we don't add it now, we probably wouldn't add it later either. Yeah. So. Okay. Let's ditch it. Okay, so record that there's no uh, consensus for this one. Cool. All right, so that's it. I think this is just a happy end slide. Oh, and, wow. Uh, Henry. Oh, yeah. I, 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 no, no. <laughs> uh, I have uh, I have two slides. I don't oh, think oh, there would be okay. time, but there is. Uh, so this, this one, yes. Okay. So uh, we agreed that stopping is a good idea. And then uh, reject was sort of questioned, but basically, so th this is the start. The starting point of th this slide is everything we we talked about earlier. We have it, uh, and so the problem is we now have two new APIs, and uh, I would say that you, you very rarely care about the difference between stopping and stopped, um, because if you're stopping, you're you're already like locally you're stopped. It's just a matter of receiving an acknowledgement of the fact. Uh, and the only reason we're doing all, adding all of these complexities is we want to avoid the bundle foot gun, right? So that's, we're, we're trying to avoid the foot gun. The question is like, how many new APIs do we want to expose 
just to avoid this thing? Like, do we really need this amount of granularity? Um, and also, like, do we do we need? Can we expose more or less the same thing with what we already have? Um, next slide. So my solution is we treat stopping as a direction, and we remove reject. And we've we've already talked about reject. So just quickly, I, 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 my the argument for removing reject is that it optimizes away an FTP ping. For the cost of being a foot gun, it's not worth it. As stop is good enough, so let's just remove that. Um, the rest of the slide is if if we treat um, stopped as a direction, then we don't need the stopped attribute and we don't need the stopping attribute because uh, we know whether or not we're stopped or stopping uh, by looking at direction uh, and current direction. Right, like the difference between stopping and stopped is has this been negotiated and that's sort of what the difference between direction and current direction is one is the direction is i'm, I'm willing to to use this direction and the current direction is this is what's been negotiated um and if if we uh, if we treat this as a direction we can even get rid of the stop method and just say doing stop is is, is just doing direction equals stopped um uh, I don't care either way about that one. The, the point is removing the stopped attributes. Um, so the difference between direction today and direction in this scenario is that if the stopping internal slot is true, then we say direction is stopped. So you can say like, okay, direction stopped says we, we need to negotiate that we're stopped, but current direction might still be something else indicating that we're not fully stopped yet. We, we haven't negotiated yet. Once we, we are fully stopped, then the, both the direction, the current direction would say stopped. So API wise, um, I, think, I think whether or not we're stopped or stopping is, is very similar to what direction or current direction is. Uh, this does, by, by treating a direction and stopping and stopped as the same attribute, that means that uh, you can no longer check the direction internal slot while you are stopping. So it's it's taking two similar two concepts and putting in them and what as one. But the, what I want to say is it doesn't matter what the direction is, and you don't need the direction as a control surface once you're stopping because stopping is is this dead end thing. You you become stop stopping and then and it's it's gone it doesn't matter if the answer says this is stopping but it's send receive or this is stopping and it's inactive because the direction isn't applicable to something that stopped um so this this just makes the api a bit cleaner and it's it hides the whole complexity some more so an api user just really doesn't have to care uh comments Thoughts? Well, so uh, Yannick, I, I don't think I like this because I see three problems with it. One is that um, direction is sort of this uh, long held concept uh, with uh, send receive, send only, receive only inactive that matches JSAP and uh, SDP. And it's not clear that it, you know, we could have done this before, right? And we haven't. The working group hasn't done this well, before. Yeah. And the other part I don't like is, so I'm not sure the concepts uh, blend as well. And I worry about the edge case where you're locally stopped, but the other side isn't hasn't been informed yet. You can still receive incoming offers for a while, even if you have fixed roles that you have to deal with. And the current algorithm for, for applying uh, might actually even change direction. Um, so I'm and, not and, and, proposing- sorry, it might change current direction. Yeah, and I'm not sure- yeah, go ahead. I'm, I'm not. I'm not suggesting we change the direction internal slot. Like it will behave okay. the same. I'm only suggesting that the attribute direction okay. says stopped. The internal right. slot can still be whatever, yeah. right? And and the the thing you said about you still you, you still need to be prepared for uh, offers even though you're stopped. Like mm -hmm. yes, and that's true. Even if the API says stopping and stopped separately. That's true, but the thing is, once it's stopping, it's it's not sending and it's not receiving. So it's it's a dummy. Like why, 
why do you need to call out the fact the direction is A or the direction is B? It's it's stopping. It's not it's not used for anything. Right. But, but the other thing, I, I I'm not trying to understand fully though the direction. I thought you meant uh, at first when you told me this, I thought you meant that you set direction to stopped when both ends are stopped as part of negotiation. But you're saying this is instead of stopping. Is that right? Yes. Right. Yes. So so direction direction being stopped is the equivalent <coughs> of the stopping state, right. and the current direction being stopped is the equivalent of the stopped state. Right. This is how you tell the difference between stopping and stopped. So if you if you if you care about that difference, you you still like this this new proposed API still gives you the same amount of information. The only edge case that I can think of that you don't know the same amount of information as before is when you're in has have remote offer and you're well like you can be in a case where you're stopping and you the direction slot is used to generate the answer so you can't predict the direction that's going to show up in the sdp because the direction attribute just has stopped instead of saying whatever it's going to show up in the answer but my argument is so what it doesn't matter your your transceiver is stopped it's not used for anything and it doesn't matter what the answer says because your transceiver isn't going to send and it's going to, not going to receive. Uh, sorry, we are out of time and at least as as is quiet, I need to go. <laughs> yeah, right. right. I, I kind of think I like the old API better. I think a stop method is more final than setting a direction, which you could set set again, right? I guess it would throw an exception mm -hmm. if you try oh, to I, set direction. Yeah, I, I kind of like the stop method just because it's the, it's more explicit. But I, I like removing the two new, two new variables from the API. I think they're just confusing. And I, I'm fine with keeping the stop method, but having it be the same thing as direction equals stopped. I'm just, this is more about getting rid of stopped and stopping. Well, we already have stopped, right? And JSEP refers to it, so that's the problem. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah, I think we're going to have to to use a coin of phrase, stop the conversation at the moment, because <laughs> um, we're out of time. Um, but, was there any other interest in this uh, from others? I kind of like it. I saw it saw it an hour ago, and I kind of like it. All right. All right. Uh, um, I, I don't think we can record a consensus at the moment. I'll, uh, uh, I'll bother you again in the next meeting. <laughs> OK. OK, well, thank you, everybody. I think we did get a lot done. Yeah, thank you. Yes. OK. Until next time. See you next time. Bye. Stop recording. Uh, yes.